This is your one and only warning. Your screen will soon be filled with dramatized stories of scientific research that some people may find controversial or disturbing. Your discretion is advised. Ask yourself, does progress always come at a price? Are some experiments too risky or just wrong? A little curiosity can't hurt anyone. Can it? But first meet a man exploring the circuitry of the human mind. The electrical impulses that move us. He wants to cure the mentally ill, but he figures out something else. He can make people do almost anything by remote control. Spanish neuroscientist Jose Delgado has just accepted a faculty position at Yale University. Jose Manuel Rodriguez Delgado, the latter to meet you. Here, Doc, let me help. What's this? Ah, it's for the heart. To control the, uh, the, 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 the rhythm. I call it a pace maker. It's very exciting. It's a uh, work in progress. It's a chemitrode. Release just the right amount of drugs into the brain. Wow. Does it work? It is the future. The Second World War revolutionized electronics, sonar, missile guidance, radar, and then in 1947, the transistor was invented. Delgado was one of the first people to consider ways of applying these new technologies to medical treatments. His thinking was quite revolutionary, uh, but to some people it seemed quite out there, almost science fiction. But Delgado was way ahead of his time. Delgado wants to use electronics to cure mental illness. Now, my really big idea is... Electrical stimulation of the brain. I've heard. But I mean, what's the point? You know, we already have lobotomies when they work. Lobotomy is a barbaric procedure. Chopping into the brain with knives. It's crazy. Now, I convince you. Delgado is fascinated by Swiss research on electrodes implanted in the brains of living cats. When they stimulated the brain with electricity, the cat's paw moved, like so. It is showing we can change the electrical workings in a living brain. And I think, no, I believe, we can fix people. So it's true, you want to stick wires in a human brain. I offer a choice, lobotomy, chop up the brains with a knife, or a few wires in the brain. No permanent damage, you control how strong is the effect. Turn it off, the effect is gone. Which would you choose? Delgado suspected that mental problems like schizophrenia and epilepsy might be caused by aberrant electrical activity in the brain, not a physical defect. And so what he wanted to do was jolt these disruptions and hopefully reboot the normal organized activity in the brain rather than cut it up with a knife. It takes Delgado several years before he is ready to try his ideas on a human. Delgado was aware that different parts of the brain were involved in different things. So, for instance, there's a part of the brain that's involved in controlling the muscles, and the more frontal parts of the brain are involved in thinking and planning skills. What Delgado didn't know was what would happen if you were able to stimulate these parts of the brain with electricity. Keep your hand like this. <laughs> nice. Okay. Now don't move a muscle. Okay. Oh, please, sir. Keep it open. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I guess uh, I guess your electricity is is stronger than my will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
If you want to move your arm, an electrical impulse travels from motor cortex eventually to the arm. What Delgado was doing is substituting that natural electrical impulse with a man-made one. And when he did, his subjects had no choice but to move. Delgado begins working with mentally ill patients. Violent schizophrenics, normally candidates for lobotomy. Uh, she stabbed several people. It's mostly strangers. And the nurse. So you need to be careful. What? Doc, if she does freak out, I mean, she'll rip the wires out, ruin the equipment, maybe even hurt someone. Don't worry. The equipment will be perfectly safe. To address this problem of wires needing to come in and out of the skull, he invented the stimoceiver, which is a radio receiver attached to electrodes in the brain, which he operated with a radio transmitter and a remote control, much the same way as one might operate a model aircraft. Okay, so you are going to play for us. Delgado can induce abnormal behavior in a mental patient by radio control. And he can manufacture emotions even more personal than anger. Oh. Hi. God, you're handsome. I... Oh, I don't think I've ever seen anyone so handsome in my life. <laughs> I just... The woman wasn't naturally attracted. She had had an electrode that was planted into her amygdala, which is this structure here. And it's an important part of our emotional response system. So by electrically stimulating the region, they were able to induce a sexual response in this woman externally. Delgado also produces fear, calmness, even euphoria. <laughs> All at the touch of a button. Though he set out to cure, Delgado's research has produced an unintended side effect. <laughs> Remote mind control. Jose Delgado can manipulate the thoughts and feelings of his patients by remote control. He is so confident in his new power, he will risk his own life to test it. Hey, hey, new plan. I'm going home. What, to Spain? Well, to Cordoba, in fact. What for? I'm going to find a bull, a real bull. Delgado implanted a stemoceiver in the brain of a bull in the caudate nucleus, which is associated with high-level motor control. He triggered the stemoceiver using a handheld radio receiver and was able to stop a charging bull right in its tracks, just a few feet away from him. So this is an explicit demonstration of a radio-controlled animal. He's experimenting with mind control. The most spectacular demonstration of the modification of animal behavior through control of the brain. New York Times, front page. It seems curing mental illness has slipped down Delgado's agenda. Delgado started his work when the lobotomy was the dominant method of treatment. But then, in the 60s, the drug therapies were gaining ground and lobotomy was fading, as there were concerns over its negative side effects. So Delgado needed a new justification for his approach. And the bull experiments, that showed him that there was a potential here for control as well as cure. However, that caused a lot of controversy among his colleagues who were whispering about 
where he was exactly going with this research. We are used to the idea that machines can be controlled from a distance. A garage door can be opened by pushing a button. We may also control the biological functions of human beings from a distance. You sure about that, Doc? Delgado believes violent criminals can be controlled at the push of a button. But two colleagues of Delgado's, Frank Irvin and Vernon Mark, publish a book that expands his ideas far beyond prison. Their book suggested that brain stimulation might be used to quell the violent tendencies of people rioting in the inner cities. They said that these people could be controlled, their freedom of behavior taken away as if they should become puppets. We can control violent prisoners. Yeah, but those guys on the street, they're protesters, not prisoners. They're just angry. I mean, how can we treat that as a medical condition? Where's the line? Of course, it is a matter of degree. In a complex society, there is wide disagreement about acceptable behaviors. What feelings to allow and what to cure. At that time, homosexuality was seen as a mental illness, right? No different in principle than epilepsy or schizophrenia. So. In 1972, Robert Heath at Tulane University embedded electrodes in the brains of homosexual men. And then he had them go into rooms with prostitutes who had been paid to seduce the men while the electrodes stimulated the pleasure centers in their brain. But the attempt was not a success. Delgado's increasingly public work makes him an easy target. I cannot believe this. What? He receives a court summons. A woman claims he implanted a stimosiever in her brain, and she wants compensation. A million dollars? I know every patient I have worked with. I have never met this woman. Lacking evidence, the woman's case never gets to court. But Delgado's work is caught up in a fog of controversy that he cannot escape. Delgado returns to Spain, where he continues his research using a new, non-invasive technique, electromagnetic brain stimulation. But is it to cure people or control them? That's a question Delgado never fully answers.